You alright, Ryan? Hello guys, how are you getting on? My name is Aaron Kelly and you're very welcome back to another episode of the Premier League Verdict. I hope you guys have had a good day and a good weekend. I certainly could have had a better weekend and very much down to the man that you've just seen in the intro, Anthony Taylor. We'll get on to him in just a little while. But if you guys go on to enjoy this episode of The Verdict, massive thank you for the huge support on the premiere of season six. Make sure you slap a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, we've put up a, a one to 100 FIFA songs of all time on my TikTok at the minute. The link to the Spotify playlist of that is in the first link in the description. So go check that out. Uh, it's got absolute bangers only on there. So without further ado, let's get our graphic up for season six. Obviously our green, yellow, and red box. We're going to start off nice and quick with the green box and get that out of the way first before we get into the real issues of this video. And the first one I'm going to talk about, green box, Gabriel Jesus, I'm going to give to. And Arsenal in general have made a really, really good and promising start to the season and looking really, really good under Mikel Arteta. Maybe Erling Haaland aside, I would argue Gabriel Jesus is the signing of the summer. I think Arsenal, considering they've got no Champions League football to look forward to this season, I think it's an absolute steal that they've managed to get Gabriel Jesus. And, you know, from a Chelsea standpoint, I honestly feel like we have seriously dropped the ball in not getting Gabriel Jesus into the club. I think it's a steal from Arsenal. And he repaid the manager's faith and the club's faith in him with a brace the weekend in their 4-2 win over Leicester City. Now only Arsenal and Manchester City with 100% records after two games in the Premier League. It really has been a hectic start to the Premier League at the beginning of August. I think one argument we've had about Gabriel Jesus while he was at Man City, obviously he didn't get enough game time anywhere near it, hence why he's made the move to Arsenal. Kind of similar, you know, situation for Raheem Sterling at Chelsea. But the big argument we've had is that maybe he doesn't score enough goals when he is in the Manchester City team. Well, he's now being given the chance, being given the number nine jersey to, to lead a top side at the top end of the Premier League. And I really do think that this transfer was a no-brainer and that Gabriel Jesus is going to absolutely thrive in this Arsenal team, getting in on the end of chances from the likes of Martinelli, Saka, Odegaard, who were so, so impressive for Arsenal last season. Obviously, they missed out in Champions League, as I said in the end. But I do think that with that squad, they can make Champions League football this year well up there. I think it's still a little bit early to say, oh, this Arsenal team will be in a title fight. I know there's a lot of jokes going on at the minute that Dem and City are the only two teams with 100% records. They could well be up there, but... I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. And after Liverpool's performance this evening, I know it's still early doors, but I think this, this title is still Man City's to lose, to be honest with you. But Gabriel Jesus and Arsenal, what a start to the season they've made and what an individual brilliant performance from Gabriel Jesus in Arsenal's win at the Emirates. Let's get into the bullshit then, shall we? Uh, Anthony Taylor gets yellow box and in a weekend where Man United were thrashed 4-0 by Brentford, uh, oops, spoiler alert for the red box, it's incredible that Anthony Taylor somehow how very nearly pushed United to that limit and managed to get himself the red box. He is in the yellow box for a, a sh truly shocking performance once again. This man should never ref a Chelsea game ever again. Let's just make that perfectly clear. Something else I want to make perfectly clear is that I'm so proud of Chelsea's performance the weekend. A two-all draw with Tottenham usually wouldn't be a great result, but I was looking at these two teams at the beginning of the season thinking, and you know, a lot of people thinking the same, that this Tottenham team under Antonio Conte, they're going to challenge, they're going to be top three. The signings they've made, you know, Basuma, uh, Perisic, Richarlison, Longley, they're going to come in and make a massive difference to this Tottenham team. And admittedly, you know, a lot of them players haven't really featured yet. Obviously, Richarlison Charlison came on the weekend, uh, Bissouma came on the weekend, Perisic came on the weekend as well. So, you know, it's going to take time for them new signings to, to gel, I suppose. But Chelsea looked by far the better side in this game. And Chelsea were a side that a lot of people, probably me included being the pessimistic Chelsea fan that I am, probably a lot of people ruling Chelsea out for, um, you know, a, a multitude of reasons, really. Maybe not enough done in the transfer market. Maybe a little bit of transitional period post Abramovich as well. But Chelsea were absolutely excellent, taking the lead thanks to a one Wonderful goal. What a way to get your first Chelsea goal, by the way, from Kalidou Koulibaly. I mean, Kukurea again making his debut at left wing back. Can I just say how refreshing?
refreshing it was to have a left wing back who doesn't look like he's going on a fucking escalator when he's running. I mean, unbelievable performance by Kukurea, but an unbelievable assist and volley by Khalidu Koulibaly. I mean, a ridiculous goal to give Chelsea the lead. The last thing I expected from him. And truth be told, uh, Tottenham went into half time very fortunate, I think, to, to for the game to still only be 1-0, and that was still my worry. As, as dominant as Chelsea were and ha as dominant as Chelsea have been in this fixture, I still did think Tottenham have quality and, they, you know, Kane and Son really struggle to get into the game, Kulisewski likewise, and I still thought, you know, as long as they're not in the game, there's a chance they could come into it. But it was pierre Emi Hoiberg of all people that grabbed the equaliser for Tottenham, a really good strike into the bottom corner, shocking from Jorginho, and, you know, no wonder why uh, Thomas Tuchel decided to haul him after that. There was a bit of fisty cuffs on the bench then between Tuchel and Conte, and, you know, there's a lot of people talking about, you know, obviously the last goal from Tottenham is bollocks, and we'll get into that in a second, but there's a lot of people debating that maybe this Hoiberg goal shouldn't have counted. I think there was a Kai Havertz foul in the build-up. He was taken out by, uh, I think, Ben Tancourt, and then Tottenham go up and score, and there's a debate there that Richarlison is offside, and in Mendy's view, when Hoiberg takes the shot. I'm not a million percent sure on the Richarlison one. The, the Havertz one is definitely a foul in front of the linesman. I don't know how he didn't see it. I mean, VAR obviously aren't going to go back that far and give the free kick to Chelsea. I wouldn't expect them to. I don't think that's even in the, the rules of VAR, to be honest with you. But I don't know how the fucking line it, It's right in front of him. He's not seen it. Like, he's part of Anthony Taylor's team. He's also clearly a fraud. Must be catching. And, you know, the Richarlison offside, it's touch and go. Not for me, personally. But uh, Chelsea then retake the lead. Raheem Sterling's seen it up beautifully for Reese James, who... You know, not the cleanest of strikes, or not the, oh, it was a clean enough strike, but not the cleanest of finishes to give uh, Chelsea the lead again. I did think we'd be able to see it out, but a 95th minute equaliser, or according to Harry Kane himself, a winner from Harry Kane from the corner. But just before that, right, I need to talk about this. Every every rival fan in the league is fucking saying this, by the way. So it's not just me being a deluded Chelsea fan. I think, you know, long-time viewers of the channel, I'd like to think at this stage, you know, come onto this channel, they know what they're getting. They're, they're getting a relatively unbiased view. There probably will be a little bit of Chelsea bias here and there. But even rival fans... Are, are agreeing with us here that Anthony Taylor can never ref a Chelsea game again. But purely because of his history, and he's just completely added to it on Sunday with this. Romero, from the corner, from the corner, drags Kukurea's fucking hair to the ground. That's a red card. That's a fucking red card. And I wouldn't mind, but the bald... Excuse my French, Anthony Taylor is looking straight at it, and even VAR, who's in VAR by the way, Mike fucking Dean, I thought that plank had retired last season, clearly he still has some fucking bullshit role sitting behind a fucking computer where no one can give out to him. He can't see it either, and the referee doesn't give it, and then, you know, they go, oh, do you know what, Tottenham, retake that corner there, just for your, for your walls, retake that corner, and Harry Kane fucking buries it, I mean, not great defending from the corner, admittedly, shouldn't have stood, shouldn't have stood. Kukurea should have a free out, and Romero could easily be sent off for that. Like, fact. And I'm not just a delusional Chelsea fan sitting in his fucking shed telling you this. Rival fans from all over the league, Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal, City fans, all saying the same thing, that Anthony Taylor is a fraud, and he should never, ever be given a Chelsea game for as long as he lives anymore. It can't happen. The FA need to take a look at this because it's it's too many fucking times it's happening with Anthony Taylor. Like I like I said, the Richardson one debatable. I'd be leaning on the fence and saying the goal the high beer goal was perfectly legitimate. This one Disgrace. Absolute fucking disgrace. But you know, not just based off the weekend's performance, I know which team that I'd be backing to go further on this uh, this season after them performances the weekend. Chelsea absolutely blew Tottenham away for the whole game. Should have won the game, in truth, before Harry Kane had the chance to score that last-minute equaliser. Like, Kai Havertz misses an absolute sitter, Raheem Sterling likewise, and that is the biggest thing that's going to hold Chelsea back, is the lack of an actual goal scorer. Look, you look at it again, goal scorers the weekend. You know, the first weekend of the season, we rely on a Jorginho penalty, and again, the weekend, we rely on the defenders to get the goals, Koulibaly and Reese James. That like that can't stand. But your problem as Chelsea board or as the Chelsea manager is, you know, you bring a big striker in, he usually fucking flops. So, like, what are you supposed to do? I do think Kai Havertz could be given a chance to, you know, give it a crack up there. Sterling should score that chance. Havertz should score that chance. Brilliant ball in by Reese James. But I was incredibly proud of, of that Chelsea performance the weekend. But Anthony Taylor just fucking ruined it all. As usual. Anyway, I'm aware this video is getting on a little bit long. Stinker of the week, Man United, week two. Um, fact. Um, I mean, look, Liverpool haven't started off. I, 
got a comment on my TikTok, and I kind of agree to it to an extent. Liverpool have made a poor start to the season as well. Their draw with Fulham on the first day was poor, and another draw uh, Monday evening with with Crystal Palace. And uh, Darwin Nunez could easily be making the stinker box for that ridiculous outlash uh, against um, Joachim Anderson. But when Manchester United go to the Brentford Community Stadium and lose 4-0, it's 4-0 after 40-odd minutes, and it's game over before half-time. What do you want me to do, lads? Do you know what I mean? Absolute fucking disgrace from start to finish. First of all, David De Gea throws in the first one from Josh De Silva. Absolutely horrendous goalkeeping once again. The man is clearly finished. Matthias Jensen makes a tuna. Again, Manchester United fannying around at the back. Christian Eriksen gets caught in after it. I don't know why De Gea has given Eriksen the pass. Eriksen still should do better and should have better awareness. But is anyone communicating with him at that point? I don't fucking know. 3-0 then after half an hour when Ben Mee absolutely made Lissandro Martinez his bitch. And then a wonderful breakaway goal resulting in a goal from Brian and Belmo. Made the game completely over before half time. And not one Manchester United player can hold their head up high after that game and say, I, I did my best out there today. De Gea, shocking. Dello non-existent really to be honest with you you don't really have an awful lot bad to say about the low in that game Luke Shaw gets outran by Brian and Burma for that fourth goal Maguire and uh, Martinez I mean Martinez gets hauled for Ver why isn't Rafael Varane certain like why isn't he like first name on the team sheet I don't quite understand that Fred brutal Eriksen in a CDM role never really gonna work despite how good a footballer he is Bruno Fernandes it's incredible how far backwards he's gone in the last couple of months it really is Jaden Sancho fairly non-existent Rashford doesn't fancy it, neither did Cristiano Ronaldo, and none of the subs really made any impact coming off the bench. I will give a special mention to Scott McTominay, who was particularly shit. But two defeats, two bad, bad defeats on the bounce now for Manchester United. They face Liverpool next week, who, which, you know, usually I would be saying, oh, you know, it's a shoe in Liverpool win, but Liverpool have made a shocking start to the season as well. Only two points from their first two games, so it's going to be interesting to see which way that goes. You would still imagine Liverpool should be favourites going into that game, despite the fact they're missing a lot of players. I mean, Thiago didn't play tonight, Matip didn't play tonight, um, Darwin Nunez get sent off for Mino, Jota, they've got a lot of injuries, they're still being forced to play James Milner in the middle of the park, so it could go either way next week, but you would still fancy Liverpool to have that quality to get over the line but it's it's an absolute shambles and you feel, you feel for Eric Ten Hag because he's clearly not been given the back in this summer that, that he would he was looking for, he clearly needs reinforcements in that kind of sixth area you can't keep playing McFred, like you can't keep getting away with playing McFred, it's not going to work, Martinez looks very small for his centre back, I'm sure he might grow into it, I'm that <laughs> The, the pun was not intended there. <laughs> no pun intended, but I'm sure he'll grow into the role. <laughs> but there is just so much wrong with that club from bo from bottom to top. You know, it, it, it's just horrendous. It really is. But we could write a book on the, the shambles that is Manchester United. But this video is already long enough. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, lads, on the various uh, incidents over the weekend. It was a dramatic weekend of Premier League football. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like. Comment down below your thoughts on the weekend's action. Subscribe if you are new. And I will catch you later. <laughs>